Uh, hello. Uh, we will wait a little for uh, our participants, about several minutes, and uh, start our lesson. Well, um, let's start our seminar. And today we will look at uh, several techniques for meta learning, um, namely uh, model agnostic meta learning and uh, some of our methods uh, using contrastive learning uh, to handle uh, a problem with several uh, training examples. Uh, so um, we have a common situation when we don't have enough uh, number of training examples. For example, we have only, well, about uh, 10 or 20 uh, samples for each class uh, in some task. So uh, what we can do in these settings? Uh, for example, we can uh, label more uh, data to achieve uh, a necessary amount of training data and uh, to get a... Um, a good uh, model with uh, decent accuracy, for example. And uh, on the other hand, we can adapt some uh, in our techniques, uh, such as active learning. So we can, um, for example, uh, label only a small amount of data what we uh, have in unlabeled set. Or on the other hand, we can use uh, some techniques from uh, meta learning. And uh, today we will look at uh, this approach. So uh, again, we will watch it. Uh, we will look at uh, um, text classification uh, uh, on sentiment analysis task. So we have uh, uh, product reviews, and we have two uh, labels: positive review or negative review. And uh, we have uh, several domains. For example, uh, products from. Uh, from uh, grocery markets, for example, or products from uh, some mm, our stores. Uh, so we can look at our data set. So we have some uh, text, mm. for example, this text about sunglasses and this about some our clothes and so on and so on. And we have a uh, label. In this case, it's positive because uh, it's a good sunglasses, for example. Um, let's look at all domains that we have in this data set. So we have a lot of domains, and we have three domains uh, for which we haven't enough training samples. So we have only 100, 100 labeled uh, 
samples and uh, uh, we can assume that uh, this uh, will not be enough for training a good classifier on these uh, domains. So uh, one more time, we have several approaches uh, how to handle this problem. Uh, first one is transfer learning. So we train uh, one single model uh, on uh, data from uh, high resource domains. Well, uh, on all of these domains except with three. And uh, after transfer this model on a low resource domain, for example, automotive. Uh, so it's uh, very similar on how we uh, use our pre trained uh, transform transformer models uh, on previous lessons. And the second, appro second approach is meta learning. So uh, uh, the, our name for this uh, approach is uh, learning how to learn. So we want to force our model uh, to learn how to learn new tasks. Uh, for example, uh, a human can easily uh, learn a new task only with a few samples. For example, how to uh, distinguish a cat from dog. So we want to... Uh, our model could easily do the same thing. So uh, to do this, uh, we uh, divide our data onto sets, support set and query set, and uh, try to perform uh, uh, multi-criterion optimization on several tasks. So for example, we have several tasks and we want to uh, find uh, some uh, point in where um, some uh, weights set uh, for which we have a good, uh, for example, validation scores, for example, accuracy on all our tasks. For example, in this case, it will be uh, different domains. So we assume that we have um, one or several uh, set of uh, weights of a model uh, for which we will have uh, a good enough uh, target metric, for example, accuracy uh, on all domains. So we want to find this point. And uh, this point, uh, we suppose that we uh, could easily move to uh, another good point for a low resource domain. Uh, this is uh, the main idea of one of the meta learning approach uh, called uh, model agnostic meta learning. Uh, I suppose what uh, you will told about this approach and lecture. So uh, we can look at how this work and this picture. So it's a quite uh, simple idea. So one more time, we want to find a, a good set of weights. For example, this one, what uh, will be uh, near uh, to all optimal points for all tasks. So uh, to do this, we uh, make some uh, multi-criterion optimization. So we optimize uh, several, uh, we optimize our model on several tasks uh, simultaneously. So uh, for this purpose, uh, we can create uh, some specific class that will handle our uh, data set and transform our data set uh, into this uh, into this way. So what we have as what we will have a support set and a query set. So uh, we inherit from the data set class from Torch. Uh, we will pass some examples, number of tasks. Uh, size of a support set, size of a query set, and tokenizer to uh, tokenize our samples uh, inside this class. So here we uh, define all these uh, parameters. Uh, here is a function. Uh, here is a function to create uh, batches from our data. So uh, we create small uh, data set for each task. For each task, we will randomly choose our domain, 
from uh, one of these uh, available domains in this data set. And uh, we randomly select uh, some samples from uh, this domain as a support set and some samples from this domain as a uh, query set. And uh, so we will obtain supports and queries, uh, small supports and queries data sets for several task, tasks. So uh, after that, we will create a feature set. Uh, here we simply uh, transform our obtained uh, text uh, into tokenized vectors, uh, obtain also good ideas, attention mask, so on and so on, uh, everything that we need to train our transformer model and wrap it all uh, into tensor data set. And we also define some necessary functions so we can easily get one sample from our uh, data set. And uh, here, uh, one sample is uh, not uh, one example as it was uh, previously in some simple classification task. Here, one sample is a uh, one uh, data set what consists of a uh, support uh, set and query set. And uh, in turn, the support set uh, contains several examples. So uh, in meta learning, we will move from uh, um, one example as a text to uh, one example as a data set. Uh, so here we can look at the size of our domains high resource and low resource. Uh, here we will create uh, our meta, meta task as a data set. And we can look at uh, our um, text in the train set. So we can see it's uh, again uh, reviews. So we have positive review and negative review, and so on. Um, we can also look at query set, and it's quite the same. Uh, also, we can see what, uh, as I mentioned before, what, uh, what one example from our uh, data set is not a simple uh, sample with text and label, as it was before, but it's a data set. And we also can look at our uh, transformed indices and attention masks and so on and so on. So uh, we can ensure what uh, everything transformed uh, in the right way. And uh, now we can move to uh, training part. Uh, first, we define some uh, service functions, for example, uh, set C how to create a batch of tasks. And uh, we will set a number of our training arguments. So uh, here is a number of our labels. So we have positive and negative label. Uh, we have number of uh, epochs for training, uh, size of support set, size of query set. And here we define uh, inner and outer uh, training arguments. So uh, as it was mentioned before, uh, in uh, model agnostic uh, method learning, um, we will divide our training on two parts, our inner part and our outer part. On the inner part, we will uh, train our model on each task uh, separately, and uh, we will um, accumulate our gradients. We will save it, and after that, we will reuse our saved gradients from the inner task in uh, the outer task. So. Uh, Again, to make it simpler, uh, we will uh, we can uh, one more time look at uh, the algorithm of model diagnostic meta learning, and here we can see what we have. Uh, again, we have set of our tasks as we have in our uh, meta task data set, and uh, we also have uh, some inner loop in which we uh, evaluate in which we calculate gradients on uh, each uh, task. So this is the inner step and this is the outer step. Well, uh, when we um, use all the gradients from the inner step, 
and update the overall model. So uh, one more time, uh, these small gradients, uh, L1, L2, and then L3, it's uh, inner steps, and uh, these uh, results and updates, uh, what we will see at this arrow. And this is an uh, outer step. Well, so uh, we will define uh, training arguments for inner step and outer step both. So it's batch size, uh, learn and create, update step, and uh, also we define general arguments. So uh, what type of model we want to use, uh, number of uh, tasks uh, during training and number of tasks during test. So we will define these training arguments and we will create our meta learn. So again, mm, we will uh, inherit from uh, some basic class from uh, PyTorch, namely uh, neural network model. Uh, we will uh, initialize our arguments using training arcs and our useful arguments. And we will define our forward step. So we can see it's quite big. So uh, let's look at step by step. So here we have an array for uh, accuracy, accuracies uh, along all tasks. And we have uh, another array for uh, gradients across all tasks. So we'll have a number of tasks. Uh, have number of inner update steps and here we start to iterate uh, over all tasks in our data set so we will extract a support set query set uh, we will copy our uh, meta model so we'll have uh, a meta model uh, what is the bird for sequence classification and we will copy it to uh, fine tune it on one uh, separate task so here we copy it move to device and create data loader from our support set. We also define our inner optimizer. So for each task, we will use uh, a separate optimizer uh, for training a uh, model inside this inner loop. So here we will iterate uh, on our uh, data loader for this task. So it's a standard training loop as usual. So we'll get our outputs, calculate loss, and make a backward update, and uh, make an optimization step. Uh, after when we finished with a training model on one uh, specific task, uh, we will we want to uh, calculate uh, gradient updates. What we will um, apply to our meta learner model. So here we. Uh, calculate and save our gradients from uh, this uh, specific task. And so we will store it in this array. And after that, we will we, will, we also want to evaluate our model on uh, some test set for this task. So that's what we do. Here is simple evaluation loop. So, uh, and to final, we will obtain the accuracy on the set for this task. So um, uh, here we ended our training on all uh, tasks. So uh, this is where inner loop is ended. And we want to uh, make an outer optimization step. So uh, again, what we talked about earlier, we accumulate all gradients from all uh, inner tasks uh, and uh, make uh, one uh, optimization step for the meta model for uh, outer uh, training loop. So we will create create this learner. We will set our seed, set number of tasks and uh, size of support and query set, and also tokenizer. Mm, well, again, can look at our support set. Well, it's the same as it was before, uh, the number of positive and negative samples uh, with text reviews. And finally, we can start our training. 
so what will happen here? Here again, uh, just simple uh, loop to iterate uh, across our uh, previously created meta task. So here we simply uh, call our learner and uh, evaluate it uh, each, for example, 20 steps. So uh, here it's look quite a simple uh, loop because uh, the most of the most of our uh, training uh, functions uh, were defined in uh, this class you know, forward uh, method. So uh, we can look at uh, how our model training. So we can see what uh, inner loss on each task is decreases, what is good. Uh, we also can uh, look at accuracy. For example, we can see what accuracy is gain quite high. And uh, we can wait a little more for, for example, the end of one epoch. Unfortunately, this is quite a um, uh, quite a long, uh, well, this train loop requires uh, a big amount of time. So I suppose what we wouldn't wait for this training end. So we will wait, for example, for uh, printing this accuracy and uh, stop our loop at this step. Um, well, uh, we can see what here we calculate accuracy on our test set. So For now, we are inside this loop for one of our inner tasks. Uh, well, uh, I suppose for now we can uh, left this model training and uh, move to the second part of our seminar. Uh, here we simply uh, look at our code without running it because uh, for now we have this model running. So uh, at this uh, notebook, we will look at uh, another approach uh, for meta learning, uh, or uh, for our approach uh, for the task, but uh, for what we don't have enough uh, amount of training samples. So uh, we will try to do a few short text classification using a set fit library. So uh, what is set fit library? It's a simple. Um, framework uh, what is built uh, around uh, widely used eigenface transformers framework uh, what um, in turn um, could be used for a uh, few short classification tasks for example uh, for uh, sentence classification for sentiment analysis uh, what we have in this notebook for example and uh, this framework adopts some uh, our techniques for future learning. Uh, so uh, here we will look at uh, SST2 dataset. Uh, so it's again a uh, sentiment analysis on uh, some sentences. So we have to uh, define is our review is positive or is it negative. And um, well, uh, Instead of it, we use uh, 
a slightly another approach for future uh, learning, uh, what is based on uh, contrastive learning. So uh, the key idea of contrastive learning is, uh, is to um, separate uh, the positive uh, instances from the negative instances. Mm. So we will create, uh, again, we will create uh, an uh, additional inner data set what will contain um, triplets of uh, positive samples and triplets of negative samples. So what is a positive sample uh, in this term? So it's um, two similar sentences and uh, you, for example, same label. And on the other hand, the negative uh, triplet is uh, two uh, different sentences uh, with different labels. So uh, the key idea of uh, contrastive learning of this approach is to separate embeddings uh, what are stored inside positive triplets from embeddings what are stored inside negative triplets. So for example, we have, uh, for example, five uh, samples from a negative class and five samples from positive class. And uh, the main idea what we want to uh, enlarge the distance between uh, the positive and negative samples on the one hand and simultaneously we want to diminish uh, the distance between uh, positive samples. So uh, on the other hand we can say what we want to shrink our clusters uh, with uh, samples from our from one class and uh, enlarge the distance between these two or more clusters. So with this approach, we can create uh, much more uh, training examples when, if we use a simple uh, fine tuning approach. Uh, so uh, we can assume what uh, in this case we will obtain a better accuracy when we simple fine tuning on several examples. So uh, for example, um, again, uh, one can look at uh, mm, paper about set fit framework and uh, well we can see what uh, it's uh, really true for example uh, in case when we have only eight samples for each class uh, this approach with set fit uh, obtain better scores when simple fine tuning on with uh, small amount of samples so, for example, if we simply fine tune our model on uh, eight, eight samples from each class on SST5, so it will be about uh, 40 samples, we will obtain only 33.5 accuracy on SST5, and we will obtain uh, with uh, fine tuning, with simple fine tuning, and we will obtain. Uh, 43.6 uh, accuracy uh, with set fit approach. So this trend uh, preserves for all data sets, as we can see. Um, so let's return to our first notebook. So we can see what it's still learning, but we can already see what we um, what we already have uh, good enough training accuracy. And uh, moreover, we already have good enough uh, F1 score on test set. So it's also good. So we already uh, can say what this approach is working and it's working better when uh, some simple fine tuning. So uh, we will stop our training at this step because mm, we want to uh, look at the, well, another method. What we will run in, well, of course we want to uh, Firstly, stop this session in collab. And 
now we are ready to start another session for this notebook. So we want to reconnect. And uh, firstly, we will install this framework, name uh, set fit. Well, let's wait a little bit and uh, we will see what everything is told as we wanted. Yep, so we can move to uh, next part. Uh, Again, we can uh, upload our trained model uh, di directly to Hugging Face Hub, uh, but we don't want to do this because uh, it's a simple uh, trained notebook. And we will also doesn't want to install uh, Git LFC because we, well, wouldn't push our model uh, to Hugging Face Hub. And uh, once again, we will use assisted to dataset. Let's load it and uh, look at its structure. So assisted to dataset, it's um, set them analysis on movie reviews with two uh, labels, positive and negative. Um, and it's quite a simple task, for example, um, the best model uh, on this benchmark is about uh, 95 or maybe uh, 98 percent of accurate in terms of accuracy so it's quite a simple task but uh, we will uh, subsample our data sets using uh, this function from uh, setfit uh, because we want to simulate uh, low resource training settings uh, so we will get only eight samples for each class because uh, we have only two uh, classes we will obtain uh, 16 samples in general so it's quite a small set for training and uh, let's try to tune our model So as it was mentioned before, uh, set fit framework and most of the classes and methods from uh, this framework are simply uh, uh, wrappers about uh, around um, around the same uh, classes and methods from uh, Hugging Face Transformer. So here set fit model is uh, some uh, wrapper about uh, pre-trained model from transformer. Oh, not pre-trained model, but uh, after model, of course. Um, and here I will uh, define our trainer for this framework. Uh, so we'll define model, train data set, uh, validation data set, uh, loss, what we want to use in this task, uh, number of iterations, so this is the number of examples what we want to generate uh, for our uh, contrastive learning. So it's the number of, uh, well, it's proportional to a number of uh, triplets uh, what we will generate inside uh, this training. So uh, we will have a little bit more triplets because it's, uh, as I remember, it's a number of only positive or negative triplets. So in general, we'll have about uh, 40 or maybe even more uh, training samples. And this is a column mapping. So uh, because we will use uh, sentence models, for example, sentence BERT, we want to uh, map our uh, fields in our data sets to the format what will be used by sentence BERT. And finally, we are ready to train our model. So as we can see, it's uh, quite a simple pipeline. So simply load the model, set training parameters and move to a training. So we will train only for one epoch and uh, let's look at our metric. 
what will be an accuracy for this case. And we can see it's uh, about um, 87%. So, of course, we want to compare it to uh, some benchmarks. So, let's look at it. Mm, this is the two uh, benchmark. So let's look what we could obtain on this data set uh, if we will use the full data set, of course. So the best model is about 97.5%. That's a, mm, quite good. And uh, well, some simple uh, CNN based models uh, without some pre training uh, could obtain with similar uh, accuracy as we obtain only with uh, 16 samples. So, one more time, all of these models from all models from this benchmark uh, was trained on. Uh, this amount of training samples, what's it's uh, much more bigger uh, when uh, we're our training data set. So, again, we'll obtain uh, quite a good quality for this uh, number of samples. And of course, we can load uh, this model from uh, again from Hagen Face Hub and uh, try to predict something, for example. I assume what the first one will be positive and the second one will be negative. So let's look what we will obtain. Mm, yep, uh, this is a positive and this is a negative. Uh, everything's fine. And um, well, uh, we also uh, can fine tune not only some pre-trained model from Hagen Face Hub. We also could fine tune some model, some pure PyTorch model. So it uh, wouldn't be necessary as some, some transformer model, for example. For example, we can sometimes uh, we can uh, fine tune, uh, for example, uh, more uh, common models, for example, uh, some RNN model or some CNN model. For example, if we don't have enough uh, resources, we don't have fast enough uh, hardware and so on and so on. Uh, so uh, one more time. Now you'll add to our model some a digital head that we want to train uh, during uh, this pipeline. Again, define with all, uh, all these parameters and again, uh, train uh, this model. So we can look at different settings. For example, we can freeze our head, we can freeze our, the body of our model and so on and so on. For example, if we will freeze the body of our model, uh, we will obtain a much more faster training on the one hand. Uh, but on the other hand, um, uh, we will train only the head of our model. So, uh, for example, uh, it couldn't be enough in some cases. So, in general, of course, it's better to train both model and head simultaneously. Uh, but, uh, of course, it's more computational expensive. So, here we can train only our head. So, we will freeze our body and train our head for 50 epochs so with much bigger learning rate because our head uh, initialized with random weights so uh, we have to perform more optimization steps to find uh, of a local uh, minimum for our weights And again, we can evaluate our model. Look at its accuracy. Well, again, it's uh, quite a good. So it's not uh, better than the uh, top performing model on uh, 
this benchmark, of course. But on the other hand, uh, the best model on this benchmark is uh, T5 with 11 billion of parameters and moreover it's trained on full uh, data sets. So, well, of course, uh, it will uh, strike with much more higher accuracy. Uh, so um, that's all for today. Um, well, uh, if you have any questions, uh, I'll be glad to answer it. If not, well, uh, thank, thank you for your thank attention. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, goodbye.